Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. In this video, we're going to look at how we can create this watercolor style rendering. So for this video, you'll need an outline of your model, a simple base render from any rendering program and the watercolor brushes that you can download from the link below. This was the model that I used from the SketchUp 3D warehouse. I downloaded the model and opened it up and uh, started looking for the view that I wanted to use for my watercolor render. So I decided to go with a, a front view uh, for an easier approach in the watercolor render. So once I uh, sort of played around and decided my view, uh, I decided to set the view as a scene. So you go to view animation and add scene. So you can even change the scene and update it by just right clicking the scene tab and clicking update and once the scene was set what I did is I started exporting different <coughs> types of views into a folder on my desktop so for the first one I exported an outline view then after that I played around with uh, different types of views and exported a textured view after that I opened up my rendering program in which in this case is Enscape and try to export a basic clay render so for that I went into the render settings and clicked on the white model option so here in the rendering tab you can see the, in mode I change it to white and so you can see that it's a pro, it, you get a, a white model then I went to the, uh, the render settings and made sure that I don't have a background and turned on the white background option. After that I also checked that I, c I export an alpha channel so just so that it's easier to remove the background. Then I selected the same folder and rendered the, the image. So now you can see that I've got all my images and I just renamed them so that it's, it's, it's easier to understand when I export them into Photoshop. So I start exporting all the different images into Photoshop and also remove the background of the render using the alpha channel that I had exported. After that what I did is I uh, tried to line up the outline view to the render so that it's easier to overlay the image once I've get the watercolor strokes in so that took some time but I got the, the alignment correct after that I started selecting different parts of the render using the outline image that I exported and chose the 483 brush as that's the one I like but you can choose any option that you like to render it out so I chose the 483 brush, chose the color that I would like to apply. I'll go with this uh, kind of brown, reddish brown color. Okay, and now I started applying it into this area that I had selected. So what I did is I created a new layer and made sure that uh, it's not applied throughout the selection but uh, rather uh, you know in applied in different parts just to simulate a water watercolor approach so let's make a new layer and uh, start applying uh, our watercolor uh, to the watercolor texture to the image just in, uh, adjusting the image one final the color one final time and yep let's start in applying it yeah I think that's good now similarly I uh, started doing different other selections using the outline image and the magic wand tool and gave that a little bit of a gray color You can choose any different color, any type of color palette that you like according to what it comes in, what's, what's your preference. I just uh, went for one pop color that's this reddish brown and the other major colors I kept it a little uh, light and gray. 
so I try not to apply throughout the selection but rather leave a little bit of white space like how you see in watercolor drawings so it, it gives a more natural look now I'm just going to select this planter box and, even, and give it the same pop uh, red color Now what I did, I just uh, turned all the uh, rendering layer back on and I've reduced the opacity and just set it uh, behind the uh, behind the watercolor texture so that you get a little bit of play of uh, the shadows and um, the texture that you get from the rendered image. I'm also uh, adjusted the the um, the lightness in the image in the rendered image using the levels tool. So I've adjusted it a little bit here and there so that you get a little more lighter approach and a little bit of the grays, grays are faded out. Okay, reduce the opacity a little bit more and now yeah, I think that looks good. Now I just went back and uh, started adding a little bit more color in to the other parts of the render, mainly the floor areas. So I gave that a little bit of that reddish brown color as well. After that I went and selected all the glass zones and gave it a light blue color. Good. I just grouped them and put them in another, put them in another folder so that it's just neat and organized. Now after that, I started adding elements into the context. So I added like a green area, green space just in front, and matching the perspective. So let's add a new layer and uh, select a, a suitable green color. And just add in a little bit of a little patch of green just to get in some amount of context into the into a render I think that looks good also these stone uh, image stone outlines that were there in the render I thought I, I needed to add a little bit of shade into them so I just chose a green color and just started shading them in giving a, a darker color at the bottom Then what I did is I added some um, silhouettes of people just to give a little bit of scale to the render. So I bought um, some people inside and just added a color overlay onto the image and uh, yeah, tried different colors out. Uh, I tried uh, 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 black colors and orange colors but I thought in the end it was better to just go with a white color as it didn't, sta as it didn't take too too much away from the image so I just added in one more person and did the same color overlay after that I added a little bit of um, landscaping of um, some different varieties of trees so it's important to add different varieties of trees rather than using the same type of trees in your image so the similar kind of procedure I bought in the trees scaled them down to different sizes also added in uh, color overlays and then just use the outline to mask the uh, stuff that is overlapping with the building and then just reduce your opacity a lot just so that they're very subtle and in the background then as a final touch I added this uh, circular sky element so I just drew a circle and used uh, using the shape tool and just use that as a reference to create a background sky image just to add this final pop in the back uh, so that you get a little bit of um, a background to the image rather than just a white color so I uh, placed it where I wanted then scale it up a little bit
and then um, just selected the um, the tool and uh, gave it a blue color using the watercolor brushes so as a final bonus tip uh, what I did is I just uh, use uh, the shortcut control shift alt E to, to uh, duplicate the file uh, and create it into one single image and then just uh, set the blend mode to multiply and reduce your reduce your opacity to around 20% to just give that final watercolor glow so this is the final image that we have created and hope uh, you guys find found this video useful so guys um, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, more videos are gonna come soon so thank you for watching